Okay. That's exactly what's happened. The, the narrative has been flipped 180 degrees. This subject has come out of the fringe into the mainstream, and we are in a totally different ballgame. Well, welcome to Beyond Belief. We have an amazing guest back with Nick Pope, who worked for the British government for 21 years at the Ministry of Defense, the UK equivalent of the US Department of Defense. He now works as a broadcaster journalist and is one of the world's leading experts on UFOs, the unexplained and conspiracy theories. Nick, welcome back to Beyond Belief. Thank you, it's great to be back. You are one of the best investigators I have ever interviewed. I just want you to know that before we start. Thank you. How did you get involved in this? Quite by accident. I had been in the Ministry of Defense for some years, and they move you around every few years, uh, level transfer, sure. promotion. The UFO job became available just at the time I was due for a move, so it was right place, right time. Did they label it as the UFO job on the Ministry of Defense? Colloquially, yes. Um, officially, the title was Secretariat Air Staff 2A, but that doesn't really mean much to anyone. So they just, you know, does what it says on the tin. Sure. When you started getting involved in this and looking at the files, I mean, were you like in shock? Yes, I was, because I didn't really know anything about this. And I thought, oh, it's just crazy stuff, yeah. right? And then I pulled out these files and I was like, wait a minute. Pilots, our own pilots in the military are seeing these things, chasing them, tracking them on radar. What's going on? And see, that's what's going on with here in the United States now, as they're revealing some videos. We're gonna look at several videos during the program, and I'm gonna want you to talk about it with me as we look at them. But it's truly remarkable what's been going on. It's almost as if those people who never believed those people in the UFO field are now sitting back going, oh my God, these people were right, weren't they? That's exactly what's happened. The, the narrative has been flipped 180 degrees. This subject has come out of the fringe into the mainstream and we are in a totally different ball game. What was it in the files that you first saw that just blew your mind? Well, I think it was the Rendlesham Forest incident. Great case, tell us quickly about that. Britain's Roswell. December 1980, not just lights in the sky, something lands, tracked on radar, multiple military witnesses, including the deputy base commander, and physical trace evidence, burn marks in, in the right. trees. Uh, Did scorched. they touch the object too? One of the witnesses touched it. Um, the defense intelligence staff in the Ministry of Defense said that radioactivity levels at the landing site seemed significantly higher, higher than the average background. Wow. And what, didn't somebody get sick, physically sick, from being too close to the object? Several of the witnesses did. And this is very interesting and controversial. It was referenced in a classified British intelligence assessment, codenamed Project Condine, and it talked about proximity to what we call UAP radiation, UAP being unidentified aerial phenomena, the official military term for UFOs. We've got some video that I want you to look at and describe with me what you think we're seeing. Of course, the video was just published by the Department of Defense. Uh, it was truly just remarkable and uh, it's been released. Why would you think they would release what we're about to see? Well, this is interesting because these videos that that are in the public domain of Navy jets. Never chasing, thought I'd see this. No, ever. No, it, it's you hear the stories, but you think, well, that sort of thing will never be officially confirmed. The videos have been in the public domain for a while, but the U.S. Department of Defense itself put them on their own website right. and said, "We are confirming." that you know, previous, it was unauthorized release. That's interesting. Um, but now we're making it official. 
Well, let's look at this thanks to the Department of Defense that supplied this video. So what are we looking at here, Nick? What we're seeing is a, a sort of pilot's eye view. This is from the plane of the pilot. From the plane. These are uh, F-18 Super Hornets, one of the most advanced naval jets in the world. Hundreds of millions of dollars per yeah, jet. Absolutely. And the pilots are the best of the best. I mean, these these men and women are, are literally the top guns. And... And so what we're seeing is forward-looking infrared camera video of these, these basically, objects that even the pilots uh, have no idea what they are. They say the speeds and the maneuvers are extraordinary. This is borne out not just by their eyewitness testimony, but by the radar data as well. Are they trying to catch this thing? Yes. I mean, they're, they're basically, these are... I hasten, I'm, I'm a little bit reluctant to use the word dogfight, but, but right. it is, I mean, they're not trying I mean, to we shoot the fire on them. No, but they're certainly trying to close on the object to identify it. And let's not forget, these are incursions into restricted military airspace, whether it's around the aircraft carriers that have been involved. And then we saw it zoom off. Yeah. Just whoosh. And one of the pilots, he had a great quote. He said, I don't know what it was, but I want to fly one. Ha. <laughs> When a Top Gun tells you that, you know that you're dealing with some pretty impressive speeds and maneuvers. The uh, Senate Intelligence Committee uh, has some legislation that they're considering which calls for action on UFOs. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? An absolutely extraordinary development. The Intelligence Authorization Act for fiscal year 2021 mm -hmm. has in parallel with all the sorts of usual things about Russia and China and the insider threat and, and Iran and nuclear issues, there's a section on unidentified aerial phenomena. And they basically say, something serious is going on in our airspace. We have multiple incursions into uh, restricted military airspace, whether it's over bases or right. in the vicinity of... Missile silos all over the place. Absolutely. And around these, these very powerful Navy carrier groups, um, the Nimitz, of course, um, the, the famous incident from 2004. So the... That's the Tic Tac. That's the Tic Tac, right. yeah. So the Intelligence Committee has basically said, we require from the Director of National Intelligence, in consultation with the Secretary of Defense, a full report into what's going on. We are not happy with the fragmented information that we have. Different parts of the intelligence community doing different things, nobody putting the big picture together. We want to know what's going on. We want a report within 180 days of this uh, bill being enacted. We want it unclassified, but possibly with a classified um, appendix. So uh, unprecedented. I mean, normally these sorts of, uh, the senators who oh, run these dramatic. sorts of committee, they, they don't touch this issue at all. It's toxic. And now they're saying things are getting so serious, we want um, DNI and SecDef to do a proper intelligence assessment. Nick, Rear Admiral Thomas Wilson has documents they claim that purport to be all about UFOs. Richard Dolan, ufologist, believes they're authentic. What are they? Well, this is a, a, a fascinating story. Um, 15 pages of notes purporting to relate to a meeting that took place in 2002, round and about, um, involving former Defense Intelligence Agency head, Admiral Thomas Wilson. Okay. And uh, Eric Davis, who had been involved in the National Institute for Discovery Science, which was an early Bigelow Nids. think tank. Yep. yep. Um, and Edgar Mitchell was involved in Apollo some of those. Apollo 14 astronaut, late yeah. astronaut. He, he had, Mitchell had almost been the facilitator of this. I mean, who wouldn't want to attend a meeting with a genuine hero? Absolutely. Sixth man to walk Absolutely. on the moon. 
So, and, we, and we loved Edgar Mitchell. Yeah, he was a absolutely. Great guy. I, I met him a couple of times. Wonderful man. Very um, interesting on all sorts of levels. But he, he set up some of these meetings. And these notes purport to, to basically run through almost the, the kind of um, origin story of the modern UFO phenomenon from UFO crash, possibly at Roswell, through to the attempt to reverse engineer something. And if these notes are genuine, it would seem to confirm almost every previously regarded as far-fetched claim about all this and have people saying, you know, maybe it's real after all. What are you looking for? I'm looking for answers. I'm looking for answers to one of the biggest and most interesting questions we can ask. And I feel that we might be as close to that answer as we've ever been. Thanks for being on Beyond Belief. Thank you. Since the beginning of time, mankind has been fascinated with the possibilities of life beyond our own planet. Is it conceivable? Is it possible? We are being visited. Think about that.